so happy we are alive. So the, mm -hmm. the doctor isn't technically prescribing a medicine, and the patient's taking it with the doctor's advice. Now it's sort of a, the lawyers would call a distinction without a difference. But uh -huh. The distinction is, is regarded as important. What it involves really is taking a very detailed history from the patient, looking at any x-rays or records that he has to support his claims, and then deciding on an individual basis uh, if the patient under the terms of the law could be helped uh -huh. by the use of uh, cannabis. And what, and what you're been, I mean, what kind of conditions have you been, been finding uh, cannabis uh, helpful for? Well, as you well know, cannabis, the hemp plant provides so many functions, and in that spirit, so to speak, the uh, so-called marijuana fraction, or the, the fraction that's, that's used, that's ingested, uh, addresses symptoms of more diseases than any other medication I'm aware of. That's incredible. Can, can you give a, a maybe a quick a quick I mean quick summary? Well, at the top of the list is pain from almost every cause, mm -hmm. especially chronic pain such as suffered by people with arthritis, or, uh, herniated uh, discs, or uh, you know very traumatic arthritis, arthritis in various forms. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are a host of uh, other less well understood diseases like fibromyalgia, which is also a painful condition afflicting mostly women. It's effective for menstrual cramps. Uh, it's particularly effective for migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, the, the most famous uh, use at the time that the initiatives were being ready for passage was uh, the control nausea and vomiting. Oh, right. That yeah, was the nausea and vomiting that was... Cancer patients. And associated with and two growing groups of patients, so AIDS, which had never been seen before, and which was increasing dramatically in the 80s. And uh, also, people who were surviving cancer chemotherapy, and that was a, a population that was growing because we didn't have any effective chemotherapy until pretty much the early 70s. And as that became more effective, there were more and more people who had survived their cancer treatment. And also there was this much bigger population of patients who were being nauseated by medicines of one sort or another. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think in the past, I mean, one of the excuses, or not excuse, but an explanation why mainstream medicine has been uh, reluctant uh, to be, to, to take more of a leadership role in, in, in medical marijuana is just uh, our history of uh, tobacco uh, smoking, where uh, tobacco was clearly, uh, at least processed tobacco is clearly related to uh, cardiovascular and pulmonary disease and for the most part the medical profession well initially we were in the advertisements for uh, for tobacco and and so it's kind of like yeah. uh, you know for anything that's inhaled I mean that has been reinforced as a taboo you know so much over and over and over and over and over again and and, and now it's only in the last uh, two or three years that technologically the advent of vaporizers where you know where people can ingest marijuana with no, zero potential carcinogens uh, puts us in a new era but it, it's actually a very complex issue uh, try not to bore everybody too much addressing some of those complexities. So, first of all, the difference between tobacco smoke and marijuana. Uh, you mentioned processed tobacco, and I think that's significant because as closely as we can tell, uh, even though the same vegetable material or similar vegetable material is burned in both cases, the uh, smoke from cannabis is less carcinogenic than tobacco smoke. Another issue is that uh, a marijuana smoker ingests far more, even a heavy marijuana smoker ingests far less of the smoke than a, than a normal cigarette smoker. All right. Then 
there are other ways to ingest cannabis other than by smoking it. Although smoking right now, smoking or vaporization, and, and by the way, I agree completely with what you say about vaporization. Smoking and vaporization uh, give exquisite control to the user. I mean, the more I talk to patients, the more I realize that uh, they're able to control their effects of their medicine with m remarkable precision. You know, um, you just remind me of something you, you said uh, before we, we began talking here uh, uh, with the Louisville audience, uh, and that was uh, that from your experience as a physician working with uh, patients uh, with uh, medical marijuana, that you, your impression was is that patients were relatively uh, responsible in their use of uh, marijuana, that, that the abuse of, uh, I don't know what we would define, abuse of uh, ex extremely excessive uh, use of uh, marijuana uh, well, hadn't even been a problem. I mean, that's something that, that, I mean, it's an argument. In fact, I mean, there's a whole gateway theory is, is based on you know, it's the devil's weed that's going to lead to, you know, bizarre behavior and whatever. So the mm -hmm. doctor isn't technically prescribing a medicine, and the patient's taking it with the doctor's advice. That's sort of a, what the lawyers would call a distinction without a difference. But uh -huh. The distinction is, is regarded as important. What it involves really is taking a very detailed history from the patient, looking at any x-rays or records that he has to support his claims, and then deciding on an individual basis uh, if the patient under the terms of the law could be helped uh -huh. by the use of uh, cannabis. And what, and what you're been, I mean, what kind of conditions have you been, been finding uh, cannabis uh, helpful for? Well, as you did well know, cannabis, the hemp plant, provide so many functions and in that spirit so to speak the uh, so-called marijuana fraction or the, the fraction that's that's used that's ingested uh, addresses symptoms of more diseases than any other medication I'm aware of that's incredible can, can you give a uh, maybe a quick a quick I mean quick summary well, at the top of the list is pain from almost every cause, mm -hmm. especially chronic pain, such as suffered by people with arthritis, or, uh, herniated uh, discs, or uh, you know, very traumatic arthritis, and arthritis in various forms. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are a host of uh, other less well understood diseases like fibromyalgia, which is also a painful condition afflicting mostly women. It's effective for menstrual cramps. Uh, it's particularly effective for migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, the, the most famous uh, use at the time that the initiatives were being ready for passage was uh, the control nausea and vomiting. Oh, right. That right. was the for nausea and vomiting that was cancer patients and associated with two growing groups of patients, so AIDS, which had never been seen before, and which was increasing dramatically in the 80s. And uh, also people who were surviving cancer chemotherapy, and that was a, a population that was growing because we didn't have any effective chemotherapy until pretty much the early 70s. And as that became more effective, there were more and more people who had survived their cancer treatment. And also there was this much bigger population of patients who were being nauseated by medicines of one sort or another. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think in the past, I mean, one of the excuses, or not excuse, but an explanation why mainstream medicine has been uh, reluctant uh, to be, to, to take more of a leadership role in, in, in medical marijuana is just the, our history of uh, tobacco uh, smoking, where uh, tobacco was clearly, uh, at least processed tobacco, is clearly related to uh, cardiovascular and pulmonary disease, and for the most part, the medical profession. Well, initially, we were in the advertisements for uh, for tobacco, and and so it's kind of like yeah. 